Valparaiso University football is underwritten by the following. Valparaiso Orthopedic Clinic for treatment of sports injuries and orthopedic surgery. Doctors Malader, Leland, Toma, Luker, Gruska, and Kay use the latest in equipment and techniques to ensure a quick and thorough recovery. Valparaiso Orthopedic Clinic with over 20 years of service. Locations in Valparaiso, Chesterton, and Portage. Costas Foods and the following suppliers, Jack's Pizza, Coca-Cola, Arizona Tea, Frito-Lay, Pepsi Bottling Company, and Jay's Chips. Costas Foods, locally owned and serving you at 2800 Calumet Valparaiso, 801 Broadway Chesterton, and U.S. Highway 6 South Haven. Costas Foods, where shopping is a pleasure. And by the financial support of viewers like you. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Valparaiso University Football. Along with head coach Tom Horn, this is Todd Eichow. Today we take a look back at Saturday's exciting last-second victory over Aurora University. We'll welcome in starting offensive guard Michael Beebe. And we'll preview the season finale at home against Kentucky Wesleyan. First, though, the head man, Tom Horn, who's very pleased that the Crusaders Three-game losing streak came to an end on uh, Saturday. Coach, you'll take a win any way you can get them in what's been a, a real, I guess, up, upsetting season for you, uh, you know, throughout nine ball games. Well, it's, you know, we're four and five, and we thought we'd be better than that. We're four and one on the road, which is really good. Uh, we won in the last eight seconds Saturday, which is kind of apropos to the season. Uh, there's a couple we could have won in the end we didn't. There's a couple we've won in the end that we have. So it speaks well of our kids, and it seems like we play our best when our backs are to the wall. Okay, let's take a look at those first half highlights. We see that the Crusaders got a break on the opening series. Coach, their first play. Now they fumble here on the option play. Fonzie uh, fumbles the ball there and uh, we recover it. Fonzie Medina, the running back who only played the first half before going out with a shoulder and she Matt Culp recovered. You come out and there's the little swing to Ozzy. 11 yard gain for a first down. And then Mike, Mike catches the, the middle, the flanker screen here, and we don't get the corner blocked. And uh, they stop us on fourth down. So the ball goes back over to Aurora, and they start to put something together. On third down, Hancock rolls, keeps for the first. That's the old contained bugaboo that's killed us all year long. We didn't contain the quarterback again there. I wish I had a nickel for every time we didn't do that. Counter to Runkle, shut off by uh, John Harrington and Chris Helton. And now they break it with the fullback, Ryan Kennedy, who barely ever carries the football. They very rarely run that play. They do that time, the missed extra point, and it's six to nothing. And we have the defense in there was set up to stop that play. And uh, as you, we saw on the tape when we were taping yesterday, there was four guys had shots at them within two yards of line of scrimmage and didn't make plays. Okay, after the Crusaders put a, give the ball back on a pump, we see a nice play on the option by Jeff Paduzic. Good tackle there by Jeff Paduzic, went through his legs and wrapped him up and brought him down. Excellent job. On third and ten, Hancock goes on top and Silvestri open and they're driving again. Yeah, they caught a corner biting on play action there and, and beat him over the top. Good play by Josh Burding stopping the counter. Excellent job by Josh. Stuffs the hole right there and forces him to kick a field goal here. And a missed field goal. Jacob slips while kicking it. The uh, field was not in very good condition, was it? It was really awful. And early in the game here, it looks like green grass out there, but it's really kind of a swamp. And uh, as it goes along, when you see the second half highlights, or the viewers see the second half highlights, they'll see how muddy and, and bad it really is. Good job by Mark Elijah on the draw play, and Nate Bobek picks up 10 yards. Here was third and six, so it was a good play for us to keep that drive alive. And here's Bob Cracknell now, fullback getting 12 yards on the inside trap playing. We're, we're blessed with two pretty good fullbacks this year. Good downfield blocking by Michael Tolward on that play. Next play, Michael is rewarded on the receiving end of a nice pass, and he fights and nearly gets the first down. Another big ball game for Mike Tolbert. Uh, Calumet High grad, nine catches for 100 yards Saturday. Excellent job. And you're Scott Heinrichs, who also had a big day, Todd. Yeah, and Scott also caught nine balls, and uh, he's caught more balls this season than any player uh, under Tom Horn at VU. That sets up this, Ozzie Young's 12-yard touchdown run, and the Crusaders tie the game and eventually take the lead on the point after. Uh, Cameron Hatton comes right in here, right here and kicks the extra point. Uh, went through there like a knuckleball, but the referees raised their hands, so I was happy. <laughs> and the Crusaders are up uh, by the score of 7-6. Uh, to six. 
They come out swing plane here. We see something which is plague you, I guess, coach. A lot of missed tackles. They either miss, you know, poor tackling or, or contain problems. That's we've those are our major problems we've had on defense all year. Remember all the sacks we've missed during the season and Hit. Here's some good coverage, Coach. Ronnie Cezone right there in position to make the intercept. Yeah, I'll, I'll say job by Ronnie. Uh, Ronnie's probably doing the best job of coverage of anybody on our team right now. A very excellent job by Ron Cezone. Crusaders unable to move the football, and Aurora gets it back. And we see a near intercept by John Wood, who saw more playing time than he has in the past and played well. And from South Milwaukee, Wisconsin, John's a, a converted quarterback, wishbone quarterback in high school, plays DB for us now. See the fine running ability of Fonzie Nadine. I think this is the play he got hurt on a hard tackle by Ike and Igbo. And he only played a couple more plays, and that was it. This was a play they ran effectively, though, that underneath crossing route. This is on first and 25 after a penalty, and they pick up 23. Yeah, they ran a couple guys down the side and screened out some people and brought somebody underneath and uh, caught some big plays off that pass route on Saturday. Good play by Scott Latskan, third and three, stops the option. That forces the field going, watch this, off the post and in. And that puts them back out in front, Aurora nine, Valpo seven, late before half. You try to get on the board, fourth down in your own territory, coach. A little bit of a gamble here. And uh, Nick picks up the first down, barely, with great effort. And Nick had a little trouble moving that mud on Saturday. On a drier field, these are more effective, but uh, he did a good job of throwing the ball, passed for 290 yards on Saturday. Scotty Henrik, 17 on this play. Does a good job getting the first down, then gets out of bounds. This is the final 30 seconds of the half. We see another first down, this one to Michael Tolbert. The coach now very late in the first half. Back final 10 seconds as you go for the end zone, and the ball's intercepted on what would be actually the last play of the half. Yeah, I tried to pump fake it and go to Ozzie. Of course, they were playing two deep covers with a man underneath him. They know he's got some speed, and uh, they had him covered well. All right, 9-7 the score at the break. Aurora by a deuce. We'll come back, check those second-half highlights when we return on Valparaiso University football. Valparaiso University football is underwritten by the following. Signs on time. Create signs in all sizes and materials. Special canvas banners, wood signs, plastic, metal, and magnetic. Indoors or outdoors, Signs on Time uses state-of-the-art materials, including vinyl lettering. Signs on time next to the patio in Merrillville, 769-4488. Mike Sporting Goods, your team sports professional. Mike's has NFL and college team crews and jackets from Starter, Russell, and others. A great selection and Mike's great value. For your team sport needs, Mike's has it. Shoes from Nike, Reebok, Converse, plus uniforms, trophies, custom screen printing, school jackets, equipment, and more. Mike's Sporting Goods, Maryville, Crown Point, Hobart, and Michigan City. Mancino's Pizza and Grinders, 706 and a half Lincoln Way in Valparaiso. Home of the hot sub sandwich, served on their very own bread made from scratch daily. Delivery available, 477 5610. And by the financial support of viewers like you. Welcome back, everybody. Coach at halftime, maybe a little frustrated. They ran the ball better than you would like, and you just had a, a, some missed opportunities, some drop balls, uh, just missing some receivers. Frustrating first half. Yeah, a little bit it was, and, but they moved the ball well on the ground, not well enough to score a lot of points, but they kept the time of possession, which is a key thing. They had 25 and a half, or we had 25 minutes to their 35 minutes and uh, 10 minutes more of time possession. That was a key factor for them. They kept the ball away from our offense. Okay, defense played, I thought, at least a little bit. Defense played well, especially in the second half. And they really shut down Aurora, except for one big play. That was it. We see a nice play by Matt Culp on the first play of the second half. Yeah, uh, Matt's stems, what we call a stem, it stems from one side of the center to the other and then slants through the gap and makes a play in the backfield. Sanders get the ball and immediately start moving it. Here's Michael Tolbert with a great effort. The catch, breaking tackles. Nice little play on the hitch. Nick goes deep and Michael pulls this one in and gives you first and goal. First series looking great inside the five, uh, down near the five. But they hold you, and then we get a field goal, which is blocked. So that kicking game came up 
bit you again. Yes, it did. Frustrating season for the Crusaders from a special team standpoint. But defense, again, it really kept you in it here in this third quarter. Uh, Runkle, a good hit by John Wood. We see him again. Gives you a little bit more uh, that hitter's mentality in the secondary. Yeah, John Wood's a very tough. He was a quarterback in high school and played strong safety and was a leading tackler in high school. So he's a tough kid. And third and five, good defense by Saul Shaheed as Hancock loses a yard. Valpo unable to move it, so Roy gets it right back. They run a uh, draw play and see a good play. That's on third down. Matt Cole pushes the center back into the play. Keeps him uh, well short of the first down. Yeah, get... And it was hard to get footing in this, so Matt was using that to his advantage, pushing that lineman back in the mud and uh, pushing him back into the ball carrier. Nate Bobeck picks up the first down. Again, Mark Elijah, nice block down on the linebacker. You run the draw here at Ozzie. And again, he attacks the secondary man. That's a 6-5 free safety he took on there. Yeah, Ozzie doesn't care. He'll take you on. Anybody, he'll take him on. There we see. That's back again, those just those near misses. That was on fourth down. He went up top and unable to get the completion. Again, the defense comes right back and again, kept you in the second half. John Harrington there with another fine tackle. See Hancock going back, and that's a big first down pickup for them. It's a curl and an out route there for those of you that understand football lingo. We go to the uh, fourth quarter now, and there's that underneath pass to Draper, and again, just a couple misses. And he'll go down the sidelines for a touchdown to make it 15-7. First score of the second half coming early in the fourth quarter. Here's what looked at the time to be crucial. It didn't actually end up being very crucial. They missed the extra point off the upright. So now it's a it's an eight point ball game. You need a touchdown, a two pointer to try, and you go right downfield. That first play here, Nick drops back to pass and throws to Tolbert on the right side there, as you see as the camera moves in. Pick up of nine, and then we see this, the uh, one-handed catch. catch. Great catch by Michael Tolbert. One-handed catch by Mike Tolbert. Outstanding catch there. And then uh, the seam route to uh, Scott Hendricks and a pickup of uh, 21 yards on that play. And we see Bob Cracknell take it in. Good pulling block here by Evan Fitzgerald. Right, and you saw the fullback move over the other side of the field. Nick recognized the defense and changed the play to this side and obviously went for a touchdown, so it was a good call by Nick. Okay, and good it. blocking by the line, good run by Bob Cracknell. Bob, uh, Kevin McHale cracks down, blocks down, and then the pulling block by Fitzgerald. Now you've got the perfect play to get the two. Everything looks perfect. I mean, there's nobody out there except Daryl Jackson in a holding penalty call. Well, actually, it was a push in the back by Kevin McHale there. So we, we had an easy two points. We should we need to stay away from contact at all and just let him walk in the end zone. All right, you try it again from the 10 and the intercept in the back of the end zone. And that keeps them in front. Frustrating. You go downfield two minutes, you score. Looks like you've got the game tied up and they take the two off the board. Yeah, it's a different ball game. It's tied. Now they have to try and score to win. Now they just have to try and hold the ball and, and move the chains and keep the clock going. And they're not that concerned about scoring. They'd like to, but they're not really concerned about it. So there's a different game plan situation if it's tied. Scott Latsky, another nice play. That stopped a first down on what would have been a first down on a third down. A great play here by Ozzy Young with a catch and a first down, about 5.30 to go. Scott Hendricks up top, watch him drag the tacklers here for 24 yards. Great effort by the uh, senior, undoubtedly an all-conference performer, conference's leading receiver, 15th in the nation right now. And 10th in the nation in yards per game. Fourth down and about 12, and you go up top and the ball sails out of bounds and you give it back with four minutes to go, down two. So the defense, which has kept you in it in the second half, needs to come up big. Now the first play, we forgot about our option responsibilities and gave, and gave up, well, actually it was second play because they get a holding penalty. So it's first and 20, and they get 19 of the yards back on the first play. Okay, good play by Matt Culp and John Harrington here. This is on the uh, first down play. They don't get anything. They'll run an inside handoff out of the shotgun to Runkle and a good defensive play there. Uh, Josh Burning in on the stop, gives you the ball back in the final two minutes. Minute 30 to go when Nick hits Ozzy Young who picks up eight, that puts you in a fourth and two, no huddle. You hustle up, you see the clock running now, 115, you gotta hustle up to the line of scrimmage here. We've got two timeouts, no, we burned one, then we've got one timeout left, so we're trying to save it. 
And we throw to Ozzy again, makes a diving catch on fourth down for a first down. Big time catch there. Okay, down to 40 seconds, as you see. After a couple incompletes, third and 10, and a great catch by Scott Hendricks. And the key here, coach, not as he makes the catch, but he picks up an extra 10 yards. Because it would have been fourth down if they tackled him right away. He fights pretty hard after he catches the ball, and so does Mike Tolbert, and they make extra yards for themselves. And, and the key to any good back or good receiver is what happens after you get, make first contact with a defensive player. What do you do with the ball after that? Okay, after an incomplete, we are down to the final 20 seconds, 21 to be exact, after <coughs> Scott Hendricks gets out of bounds about a yard shy of the first down. There you see the clock. Third and one, and Ozzie gets the first down on a nice catch, gets down inside the five. Clock stops the move to change. Crusaders run up there and you ground the ball. Yeah, we, it's a fire call. We go fire, fire, fire. Everybody gets up and we just get ready to go on uh, quarterback downs the football. Okay, after another incomplete, now 11 seconds ago, you see the low snap, but great protection, and Ozzie's great catch for the game winner. Touchdown, eight seconds to go, and we'll see the scoreboard in a second, and then we convert the extra point. And on the extra point, Todd, like we saw on the other end, two kicks by their kicker hit the uh, upright. We also hit the upright and it goes through. Excellent pass protection on that play, by the way. We'll see it again because after the ball was snapped behind Nick, sometimes that throws everything off. But he picked it up and was able to turn and had a good passing lane. We'll see the play again. The extra point makes it 20 to 15. And they throw a Hail Mary at the end of the game and John Wood gets a pick. John Wood, one of the most valuable defensive players, I thought, in the ball game for you. Did a good, came in and did a good job. We have to apologize for the the sun got pretty low there, Todd, at the end of the game, and was kind of playing make uh, havoc with our uh, camera lens there a little bit. So sorry to the viewers there that are watching our show. 2015, the final score. The Crusaders win it, and while you threw the ball well, they ran the ball well, and the stats show that. Now we passed for 290 yards, uh, 289 on Saturday. We've got 900 yards passing in the last three football games, so um, Nick is doing a good job and the receivers are obviously doing a great job. We have the top three receivers in the conference um, in Heinrichs, Tolbert, and Ozzie Young. Three turnovers for Aurora, just one for your ball club. I'm sure that was pleasing that you only turned it over once and the one turnover uh, came in a late, meaningless situation, I guess. And, and there, at the end of the game, theirs was kind of meaningless, I right. guess, too, although they would like to complete it for a touchdown. But you know, we're, we're plus two in the turnover ratio. That's, I mean, that's certainly a, such a big factor. All right, Crusaders get it done, 20 to 15. And I guess a big key, when you throw the ball for 289 yards, in most cases, cases coach, you have good pass protection. We'll touch on that coming up. First, though, we check the scores from around the conference in San Diego. Well, somehow three and two in the conference. They didn't look like the greatest team in the conference. They didn't finish at the top, but they finished better than some would have thought. Now, it, it, the turnover ratio is a big thing with them. And Butler's leading this game 16 to six with, I think, 11 minutes to go in the game. So they exploded wow. in the fourth quarter. Wow. Uh, and Dayton over Evansville, as expected, 36-10. That means we have completed PFL play, and we check the standings. Drake wins it, Dayton a game out, San Diego in third, and then the bottom three. And uh, Coach, I guess uh, a little disappointing there that you only got a con one conference win. Certainly opportunities to get more. Oh, we're, we're tied for fourth in the conference. I think yeah. That's what we're putting in the preseason <laughs> rankings, so that's where we ended up. <laughs> um, just a super year for Drake, and give them credit because it appeared like, and maybe still to many, appears like Dayton might be the best team in the conference. Yet Drake got it done in the head-on-head -head ma matchup. Uh, Drake plays a little bit tougher defense than Dayton. I think that was the difference. Okay. So the Crusaders finish up uh, at uh, one and four in the conference, but an opportunity to get to the 500 mark overall. And at this point, let's welcome in our guest. He is uh, Michael Beebe, who comes to Valparaiso by way, uh, via California. And uh, welcome, Michael. Good to have you along. Starting offensive guard who uh, sat out last year and now in uniform and has been a starter from uh, start to finish. How about the transition from the West Coast to the Midwest? How's it been? Well, basically the football is, it's all the same anywhere you go. The only difference is really weather. It's a lot colder here than it is there. And, but <laughs> it's all the it's, same. It's, it's, it's still 100 yard fun. fields they work with. Coach, yeah. <laughs> how do you end up with somebody out of California like that? Well, we, we recruit all over the country, as you know, and uh, we get information from different scouting services and different uh, 
people from the West Coast and the East Coast and the South and the Midwest, and his name was a part of that, and we started the process recruiting him, and, and he's here. He liked what he heard about our school and came over. Michael, anything in particular that was the finishing blow for you to come to Valparaiso? Basically, it was a money situation because I can't afford school, uh, you know, with my budget, but they offered money and a, a good education, and therefore I came. I like this area in the first place, and I end up choosing Valparaiso. Kings River Junior College. Where exactly is where exactly is Kings River Junior College? It's actually in the Fresno area, in okay. the very center of California. I'm actually from Porterville, California, but I went to Porterville College and then I had to transfer due to them dropping football at my first college. So I'm in actually in the center in the agricultural part. Enjoyable season for you on the field. I know the the wins and losses now what you expected, but it, are you enjoying yourself? Yeah, I'm having fun. I mean, I don't want the season to end regardless of the losses and not being able to make conference champions. But I still, you know, I still enjoyed it and I had fun and I, I like it a lot. I know one thing you enjoyed was that final play offensively on Saturday. Let's take a look in slow motion and watch the job by the offensive line. Michael, number 79 there, the left guard. And, uh, good job here because look, the snap's low. And Mike, you do a good job. They're actually blitzing, and you basically help pick up two men. That was great pass protection there. That's An outstanding pass protection, Todd, and we needed it because of time. Like you said before, the timing was off because the snap was low. It went off of Nick's right shin, and he had. A, it's really tough as a former quarterback to, to pick the ball up, find the seams, and throw a route that's going to happen so fast like that. Nick did a great job. Okay, Michael, you're in the two-minute drill, final drive. What are you guys saying in the huddle? Uh, obviously, you weren't able to huddle except for the incomplete passes. So you were yeah. huddling almost every other play, but. Uh, talk about what was going on in the huddle. Uh, who was doing the talking? What was taking place? Basically, to be, to be honest, nobody was really talking because in our hearts and in our minds, we knew that we could get it done and we knew that this team couldn't stop us. I mean, we have ran our two-minute offense all year long in two or three games and it's worked. And we knew this time that it would work as well. So we had a lot of confidence. In Seem, it seems like the previous ball games, when you've come down to the wire, uh, that has helped. The experience of being down in tight ball games uh, earlier this year, you feel like that helped in this game? Yeah, it does help a lot and it, and, and it makes it fun, but it, it also, it's, it wasn't really hard for us against Aurora. I mean, I, I give a respect to Aurora's defense, but the, the thing is, is that the experience of being in that situation when we were against Drake and against Evansville, it really helped us a lot against Aurora. Coach, it seems like Michael's saying what we've talked about, that this offense has the ability to score almost at will if you just stay away from, like, the little things have come up and bit you from time to time. Oh, yeah. absolutely, and, and Mike's absolutely right. And it seems like we play our best and we focus our best. You know, when the game's on the line, the kids are focused the hardest and the intensity level is at its peak, and that's when we play our, we've been playing our best. And, we, and really, what we need to do is, is get that focus and intensity for a 60-minute period, not just when a backs are to the wall when we really need to have a drive to win a ball game. Okay, opportunity for the Crusaders to go to the 500 mark to close out the season. It won't be easy. That's a pretty good ball club coming in, right? Oh, they're outstanding. It's going to be two really good offenses uh, going on the field on Saturday. It'll be a good game for fans to watch. And... Uh, Hopefully we'll be able to move the football and, and uh, move the chains and keep the clock moving in our favor and keep their offense off the field because they're very important. 30-23, to 23, Crusaders won this matchup down in Owensboro last year. Uh, if I recall correctly, Coach, they had some quality skill kids, right? Oh, real quality. Cedric Robinson and wide receiver. You know, they've got two wide receivers. One of them is 6'2", 222. They run 4'4", 4'5", 40s. Their tailback is 6'2", like 225. Their fullback's bigger. Uh, their quarterback's a transfer from Moorhead State in Kentucky. Um, they've got really good players on that team and a lot of good skill players, especially on the offensive side. Okay. Um, we've got a couple other matchups to take a look at. Let's run down the final week of play. Uh, Drake, what a great year they've had. Now, I know anything about it. That's Northwestern of Iowa. Let's not get confused there. Good program. Uh, Larry Corver is the head coach. I know him very well. Uh, from when I, when I was at Iowa Wesleyan, uh, runs a very good program. Uh, Drake should win the game, but uh, it's not going to be a pushover game by any means. Uh, Evansville at Aurora. Well, we've had a look at both teams, which is probably a pretty close ball game. 
I think Evansville's running the ball better now this half of the season they have in the past, and uh, if they can get that going against Aurora because of the field conditions, we know what it's going to be like this Saturday at Aurora because we were there last Saturday. Do um, you know anything about West Virginia State as they take on Dayton? P uh, played against them before, all right, and um, Dayton will Win. play the third or fourth teamer <laughs> in the, in the th third quarter. <laughs> So that, another Dayton blowout at home, and uh, San Diego welcomes in Wagner. Is that uh, Wagner out of the East? Right? Out of the East, and, and San Diego's beaten them the first two years they've played them. They went out there, flew out there last year, and beat them 35-25 at their place. Okay. And, uh, Coach, best of luck against Kentucky Wesleyan. Michael, great to see you. Thank you. Now, you're going to stay around Valparaiso after you graduate? What do you, any uh, idea you're headed back to the I West Coast? I haven't made any definite plans. I just take it semester by semester and <laughs> day by day and wherever good lord takes me that's where i'll end up keep on bringing those california guys here coach they dress so many they're very colorful dressers you know? well, like Definitely. I was we're, we're playing here in the midwest we don't yeah anyway we'll see you next week uh, we'll wrap it up uh, the season finale coming up on saturday we'll have all the highlights and details and we'll conclude this year's edition of valparaiso university football we thank michael Beebe and tom horn we thank you see you next week on valparaiso university football <laughs>